Good afternoon, fellow patriots and veterans. My name is Casey Runyon, and I have just filed for House District 9 State Representative one week and a half ago. All right, Casey. If anybody here is from House District 9, Coos Bay, Florence, anywhere in that area, I need your help. I went modern with my speech. Rightful liberty is unobstructed action according to our will within limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. I do not add within the limits of the law because law is often but the tyrant's will and always so when it violates the rights of the individual. Thomas Jefferson. As to the species of exercise, I advise the gun. While this gives a moderate exercise to the body, it gives boldness, enterprise, and independence to the mind. Games played with the ball and others of that nature are too violent for the body and stamp no character on the mind. Let your gun therefore be the constant companion on your walks. Thomas Jefferson in a, let Jefferson in a letter to his nephew, Peter Carr, 1787. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Samuel Adams. The official progressive mentality on the Second Amendment, as stated by Illinois Senator Dick Durbin, is to reduce gun violence and the Second Amendment. The idea that belittling and legislating away stand your ground, as well as infringing upon the inherent right to keep arms and bear them, is going to somehow reduce, minimize mass shootings, random acts of violence due to the hands of criminals. Dick Durbin said, speaking on the Senate floor following the tragic Sandy Hook shooting a year and a half ago, Second Amendment gun rights are not absolute. Well, Dick, I'm going to co contradict you on that ridiculous statement, because according to the Texas court decision of Cochran v. State in 1859, the right of a citizen to bear arms in lawful defense of himself or the state is absolute. He does not derive it from the state government. It is one of the high powers delegated directly to the citizen and is accepted out of the general powers of government. A law cannot be passed to infringe upon or repair it because it is above the law and independent to the lawmaking power. For generations now, our founding fathers have set the record straight regarding what it will take to truly be free and unfold unrestrained liberty. In spirit, they have been here throughout our nation's ups and downs, through each of our lives to help us remember who we really are and that we are not enslaved as some would prefer us to be. Today, they remind us that we are being called upon, that the Constitution is in dire jeopardy, and that those are awakening to be the new founding fathers and to recreate a society based on love, a society based on liberty, and a society based on limited and legitimate government. For too long now, the officials of this state and of the United States who vote against the will of the people and against the confines of the Constitution, they overreach in their intentions simply for un-American constituent approval. They care not for ethical, patriotic, or even constitutional approval, and in doing so, they have abandoned the oath which they have sworn upon. Taking this oath is the affirmation before the constituent body to which they have elected to by their best ability to uphold and protect the Constitution, including the voting process of legislation. Any legislation casted and supported to be repugnant to the Constitution is not regarding the oath, and to sway from this oath in any form is treasonous. They have the idea and have become influenced in policies and agendas which do not resemble American language by definition, but of foreign nature only on the pretense of increased safety and security. These violations which we speak of are to insist on and to cast support for restrictions and limitations of the private, fire, private ownership of firearms in refusing to obey the law of the Constitution the members of the state government not only violate the Constitution of the United States under Amendment 2, but also the Constitution of the State of Oregon under Section 27. To insist on and to cast support for unreasonable search and seizure, to violate one's home or property simply to inspect the safekeeping of firearms owned by lawful, responsible citizens. To insist on and to cast support 
for universal background checks, which blows the door to taxation, registration, and confiscation wide open. This proposed legislation, which contradicts our Constitution in both language and in text, by definition is not law, but is fundamentally null and void. And members of government, both federal and state, who create and conjure such legislation have no place in government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We learned this in 1803 with the Supreme Court case of Marbury versus Madison. The Constitution is the fundamental and paramount law of the nation, and that an act of the legislature repugnant to the Constitution is void. In other words, the court established judicial review. For when the Constitution, the nation's highest law, conflicts with an act of the legislature, that act is invalid. And not I or any man who loves his liberty will tolerate the actions of a few petty tyrants from holding on to power in a state because the will of the progressive voters of their district allows them to run rampant in a muck. Ginny Burdick, Floyd Przanski, Elizabeth Steiner Hayward, Diane Rosenbaum, Carolyn Tomei, and yes, you too, John Kitzhaber. Give us one example of anything you've done that does not take the gun from the hands of the law-abiding citizen. Give us one example of anything you've done that only takes guns from those of the criminal and of the mental element of Oregon society. What have you done to protect the rights and liberty of the constituent body, as is your job as elected representatives and senators? Elizabeth Hayward, Floyd Przanski, Ginny Burdick. You can't provide examples because you haven't. You have strived in your work only to make it difficult to own a firearm. And you have strived in your work this way because you do not believe in constitutional liberty of zero restriction private firearm ownership. Because constitutional liberty does not have limits or reasonable restrictions. <coughs> so all throughout the time that I was writing this, I actually learned a new word. That, that word is called eleutheromania. It means an intense and irresistible desire for freedom. Or, which is also a noun, eleutheromaniac. It is a person who is mad for freedom. That's all of us. Everybody who insists upon the Constitution and insists upon our liberty, our guaranteed inherent liberty as American citizens. We are eleutheromaniacs. We gather here today to remind those few in this building that the Constitution is a charter of negative liberties. That the Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government. At least that come to dominate in our lives and in our interests. We seek not to abolish the Constitution, but those who have greatly perverted and bastardized it for their own names and their own agendas to fulfill their own interests of increased Soviet-style safety and security. They will never outlaw all of your guns at once, but every reasonable control they can impose without your resistance gives them one more bit of leverage to make gun ownership for you and your children and your grandchildren as difficult as possible. That quote is by David Copel, an author, an attorney, a political science researcher, and a contributing editor to several different publications. You may have heard of him. You may have read some different articles with him. While it is most unfortunate certain individuals create madness within the perspective of violence, I do not care how many needless shootings occur. People have the right to be armed for the defense of themselves and their family, and the more people who exercise that inherent right will effectively reduce criminal violence. The embodiment of my liberty, of your liberty, and of man's liberty everywhere to keep and bear arms that shall not be infringed is the embodiment of man's liberty everywhere. The Constitution is not a guarantee of the greater good. It is a guarantee of the individual good. I will not comply. I will not lie down. I will not go quietly. I will not submit. I will not roll over. And I will not shut up. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.